I truly believe that the key to creating realistic drawings is to have a very accurate sketch, which is why today I'm going to share with you my exact sketching method that can be used by both beginners or those looking to take their drawings to the next level. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. So in order for this to work, we need a photograph, which you can get from the internet, which is kind of risky as if you do come to sell the artwork, some copyright things might arise. You could use a stock image, which is a better option as you can purchase the rights to the image, or you could just take the image yourself so you don't have to faff around with copyright and IP and just all of that rubbish. But once you have your photograph, I'd highly recommend cropping into your subject or the bit that you want to draw so that when you come to print it out, it's nice and big. Now, I do appreciate that some of you will not have access to a printer, and I'll explain how to get around this very soon using just your phone, so just bear with me for the time being. So you only need to print it out in black and white, and once you've done this, you need to remove all the white excess around the photograph. I do this using a scalpel and a metal ruler, but scissors will still get the job done. You then need to measure the length and split it into equal sections. I like to aim for around eight, but the more you have, the easier the sketching will be. For example, my photo had a length of 28.8 centimeters, so I divided this by eight to give 3.6 six centimeters. I could then measure 3.6 centimeters from the left hand corner and then move the ruler to this point and mark another 3.6 centimeters from this point, move it and then continue this process until I've covered the entire length. I then needed to do the exact same thing to the length on the top and then join the points up using a 0.2 millimeter uni pin fine liner as it's dark enough to see and it's thin enough that it doesn't cover any of the details and my next task is to simply repeat the entire process but on the width. Now if you don't have access to a printer here's what to do. Get an app called Called drawing grid and then upload your photo and then for consistency's sake I'm going to split it into eight columns. You can change the color of the line but red is fine. You can also change the width but three pixels is also great as it's not going to cover up any of those details but something that's really important is that you select squares and the reason why will become apparent very soon. You can then export this gridded photo and then go into your camera roll and then crop out the half square and now you have your photo that's all gridded up and ready to use. Now you're probably thinking that sounds like a lot of effort and I haven't actually drawn anything yet and you're right Right. It is. But Abraham Lincoln once said, apparently, that if he was given six hours to chop down a cherry tree, he would spend the first four sharpening the axe. And this is metaphorically sharpening the axe. We now need to put this exact grid onto the piece of paper I'm going to be working on, which I do by placing the gridded photo onto the piece of paper I'm going to be working on in the place that I want the subject to eventually be. I then mark out where all the points are in pencil and join them up. And it's very important that you press quite lightly here, which you can do by holding the pencil closer to the top and in an overhand grip. As you are going to erase these lines later on, and you don't want them showing through in the final result. Now, obviously, if you're working from a digital grid, you can't just place it onto the piece of paper, extend the points and connect them. You need to do it manually by drawing the same number of boxes that are on your reference image onto the piece of paper. And this is why it's so important that you have squares, not rectangles, because with squares, you know that if one length is, let's say, three centimeters, that the other side will also be three centimeters. But if you did it with rectangles, if you drew one side three centimeters, you'd have no idea what to draw the other side to keep it in the same aspect ratio as the grid reference photo so you just can't do it and boom we are all ready to start sketching but hold up what happens if you want to draw it bigger let's say on a3 or even a2 well let me show you with another project of mine as an example what you need to start by doing is taking the length and width of the piece of paper and your image and dividing them by one another whichever gives the smallest number is the maximum times bigger the grid can be before the other dimension in my case the length would go off the page so I now know that drawing the grid that's on my image 2.0625 times bigger will cover the entire length of that A2 piece of paper, the 59.4 centimeters. But how wide does it have to be? To work this out, I multiply the width of the photo with the 2.0625 to give me 26.8125 centimeters. So the grid that's going onto my A2 piece of paper is going to be 59.4 centimeters by 26.8125 centimeters. But how do I make sure it's in the center of the page? Simply take the width of the page and subtract from it the width of the grid. Then divide this answer by Two, which in my case gave me 7.6 centimeters. I can then go 7.6 centimeters from the bottom, mark a point, you go 7.6 centimeters from the top, mark a point, do this on both sides, connect the dots. And I now have a box that is 2.0625 times bigger than my reference image onto my piece of paper. And all that's left to do now is split it into the exact same number of boxes that are on my reference photo. And it is very important that you do all of this seemingly dumb maths as drawing boxes with random dimensions will leave you with a sketch that is all stretched and contorted in very weird ways. So coming back to our A4 grid, it is finally 
finally time to start sketching. Just kidding. <laughs> there is still one thing I'd recommend doing. It isn't vital, but it really helped me when I first started doing this. Go around the subject with that thin fine liner from earlier to really highlight the basic shapes that it is made of. Then measure where each of these lines crosses each of the boxes and mark it in the corresponding place on the piece of paper. Just bear in mind that if you are working on a larger scale, you'll have to multiply these distances by the multiplier. And once you're bored of marking out points, you can then start sketching. And it's now that you really start to appreciate all of that preparation and seemingly dull work that you did beforehand, as you're basically completing a sophisticated dot to dot. Which is why I believe that this method can be used by anyone, as it's no longer a complex subject, it's just lines and boxes with dots telling you where to put everything. And the coolest part about this method is that it gets easier the more you work on it, as the lines and shapes that you outline then go on to provide even more reference points for more lines and shapes. It's just really important that you're constantly looking at both the printout and also a digital image. Because the printout is black and white, you can often lose a lot of details in those darker areas. So having the digital image allows you to see those details that you may otherwise miss. And on the topic of details, you may have some areas that are particularly nitty gritty, which I'd recommend splitting up the boxes even further, just to provide even more reference points so you know where everything needs to go. And for an extra bonus tip, I use a rubber pencil, which I'll have linked down in the description, that allows me to fix any screw ups without removing any of the grids or lines that are actually in the right place. So I hope you guys can use everything covered so far to get an extremely accurate sketch. But there are a couple of things that we still need to do before thinking about colouring it in. We need to firstly remove the grid lines, which I do by holding the page and then going from my hand outwards so we don't end up creasing the paper. But we don't actually want to erase all of the grid lines. You see, leaving parts of the grid closest to the subject can be really helpful during the colouring in process, just in case you need to make any tweaks here and there. And it allows you to still use the grid to gauge where things need to go that you may not have included in the sketch. Now the final step to my sketching process, and this is something that I definitely wish I knew sooner, is using a kneadable eraser. And to use it, I firstly knead it to warm it up and then go over the entire sketch with a dabbing action, making sure to occasionally knead it again as graphite will build up on the surface and kneading it helps to keep it clean so you don't end up smearing graphite everywhere. And this step is vital for three reasons. Number one, it simply removes graphite that will otherwise smudge during the colouring in process. Number two, it makes the sketch easier to work on as it gets rid of all the messy sketchy lines, leaving you with a nice clear outline. And number three, most importantly, it means that the lines aren't dark enough to show through in the final result, which is particularly important when working with alcohol markers as the marker ink seals the graphite, meaning that you can no longer erase it. So those dark lines will still show through in the final result, which is a bit pants. So there you go, my entire process from start to finish of how I create extremely accurate sketches from photographs. I'll have all the materials used today linked down in the description. If you have any questions about this method, please leave them down in the comments. And as always, if you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you soon with more drawing content. Thank you.